Hello, welcome to Galata Studios here on YouTube. I uh, hope you're having a good week. Uh, for those of you who are uh, dealing with the hurricane in its aftermath, I hope that you are all safe and doing well and hope everything gets settled up quickly. In the meantime, here I am at the studio working on Mammoth Cave again. Uh, this time I'm going to be putting in the gypsum that has been covering the rocks. So that's going to be my next step here. Once this is finished, then we can get into corrections and details, which is always an exciting th step in a painting. But first we have to finish off this. Again, I'm only using raw paint, so I'm not going to be putting in any of my medium. No mediums in this. Uh, I like using Old Holland paint, and today we're going to be using the Old Holland Yellow Light, which is that bone white that I really enjoy. I'm just going to take a nice chunk of that out. There we go. That should do very nice, like just a little bit. You don't need a lot. And that may be the only color we're using today. If I'm going to use another color today, I already have it set up and prepped, and that is Payne's Gray. If I want to get into some details in the rocks, but I don't think I'm going to get into that yet. And the reason I don't use any medium, of course, is because I don't want to have it shiny. I want a nice matte finish on this. I think that fits the stone better. So the stone was very dry. It wasn't very shiny or anything like that. So all of my natural color paintings are in that matte finish of just the paint. You don't really need medium for a lot of this. The paint also holds up brush strokes very nicely. Let me show you a quick look at some of this. So the brush strokes really come in. There we are. And that helps because the stone itself is very rough. So we want to be able to mimic that roughness of the stone. It's not polished or anything like that. And at the same time, you know, how use the brush strokes to form details. So I've got two very small brushes, uh, Essex series flat which is a bristle brush. And I've also got an Isabi. And this, this is a very teeny, teeny tiny little brush because the gypsum flowers have a little texture to them. So I want to be able to tease some of that out once I lay in the colors. We're going to be working from the back to the front as usual. And if you've been following me here on YouTube, you know we've been working on this one for the past couple of, couple of weeks. And we're getting close to being finished with this particular painting. And now I'm bringing up that. And it looks very white. It looks very pale. Especially when put up against the other colors. And get a little more of my brush here. And we're just going to tease them. And these, we're not going to blend smoothly. The gypsum is not smooth. It's very bumpy. It's, it crystallizes. Um, it, it can form what's called gypsum flowers, which are these very pretty little... Oh, this, this brush seems to be doing very nicely with this. Getting in some brightness here. And bringing in some of the crystal growths that were on these walls. I'm just gonna just gonna kind of push them in just a bit just just a push just a little push nothing too too hard here and again you can go kind of crazy doing this I don't want to do that here I want to be a little more careful with it there and get some of these little little bright patches that were sitting on these walls. And I can just barely, just barely see the footnotes that were left behind from the very beginning. They're covered with a couple of layers of paint, but there's still lots of lovely texture here to work with. And I can just barely see where the paint is lighter. And that means that's where the gypsum goes. So the footnotes seem to be working well. 
Which is why I use them. All right. Just a little bit in here. Just, just the lightest. Just want to brighten that just a, just a touch. Uh, gypsum wasn't everywhere, but it was on a lot of surfaces. It depends on what was in the rock. You know, did the rock contain the right chemicals to create that gypsum effect? And then I'm also putting in a little bit of light here and there. just to bring out edges. And that increases its three dimensionality. Like right here, I'm just gonna, just a little bit of a light color, very, just a touch. You can see here, there was a little gypsum up here. I can see that. Just, just a bit. I kinda went down in this direction here cover the top of the stone. Now I've got some left to, on my brush so I can bring in some of these edges which were in the light, but didn't necessarily have gypsum on them. So in a way, using this bright color, I'm using it for two different purposes. I'm using it for highlights on the stone, as well as the color of the gypsum. There we go. That brings that in. Just a touch. Here I've got some. Now I'm still holding on to this small brush. I may use it yet, or I may just wait for to use it for details. That might be the smarter thing to do. And I'm beginning to lean in that direction, so for now I'm going to put this brush down. I've got it right here in front of me. Got a whole little little jar filled with small detail brushes uh, they are your friend Th they are expensive uh, the bigger brushes are expensive as well but sometimes those little ones whew, they can get very very pricey and it's for good reason I mean they're they're handmade you know and you're paying for someone's time to make that brush for you yeah. you know, the lower cost brushes you're not made the same way. I prefer handmade brushes for their qualities. They're very high quality brushes. So I'm a bit of a I really like to make sure that I'm using the right equipment when I'm when I'm painting I don't want to rely on something that's not going to last or I want to buy something that purposely isn't going to last so my scumbling brushes to me it makes almost no sense to use a high priced bristle brush for that purpose because I'm going to kill that brush and I don't want to keep doing that with high end brushes so that is the time when I use a lower quality brush. When I know that the technique I'm going to use is very, very rough and would be very harmful to, to the brush itself. I've often said when I walk into an art store, all the brushes kind of flinch away from me. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> you know, if, if they could talk. The things they'd say about me would probably be very unkind. I do put my brushes through a lot. And I expect a lot from a brush. What I don't expect is that they'll last. Although I do wash them, I keep them very, very clean, I keep them well. There we go. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint. I just want to. Bring out that more. Oh, there I go again. Finger painting. 
That's all right. My painting, I can finger paint on if I want. Just want to bring out some of these other bits of stone. There's some nice shadow here, but sometimes you you want to bring out some features of the rock with some highlight as well. Yeah, a little gypsum encrustation there. This really was a fascinating place to, to paint. Very dry for the most part. There were a couple of areas that were what it was. We went further down in the cave. There was more humidity and that caused its own challenges. For the most part though, the, the cave is very dry, which is not bad for the painting I was doing. The humidity was a little worse, but most of the areas I was painting in were, were bone dry. There we go, just, just a little bit, just to pull that out and unify it. Just a touch, just a touch to bring that out. Now I've got some nice areas where I know gypsum is forming. So when I get down to my detail layer, I know what's going on here. And I can work with it. Bring these in just a little bit more. You know, some of these crystals were very amorphous. They were all over the place. Almost looked like a, a hard white fungus. It's very interesting, but it's, it's all mineral. do the same here. I'm just going to bring in these little, little bumps here that show up in that sharp edge. And that's to indicate that there was this crystallization on the walls that I wanted to capture. It just fascinated me how these different minerals kind of work together in the cave, how they form together, how they responded to each other. Very interesting. I'm going to be very curious about the chemistry of the cave. You know, you got to wonder what's happening here. Why? Why is that happening? Where is it coming from? What might happen someday with this section of the cave? What might it look like in a thousand years, 10,000 years? Who knows? I didn't really have a lot of gypsum on it because the gypsum doesn't flow the same way that the limestone does. The limestone is carried by water. The gypsum is not. Gypsum forms afterwards. It kind of squeezes out of the rock like toothpaste through a tube. So this was not the gypsum itself the formations were not themselves a water process. They came later. At least that's what I was told. And I, I believe it. I don't remember seeing a lot of gypsum lower down in the cave. I don't remember seeing it encrusting the rock. But when you go up into the cave, you go you know, into the upper levels, then yeah, you start seeing a lot more gypsum where it's dry. It really is a fascinating place. You know, what fascinated me was not just the size of the place, but 
the fact that it shows how much is down below that we don't know that we have no idea about we have no no clue what's beneath our feet and that just fascinates me you can see I'm just kind of taking my brush and putting out probably going to be putting in some grays in this bright white just to differentiate some things we'll do that in the, the details phase probably in a week or two I want to make sure this is really dry before I start messing with the uh, the details I want to make sure everything is in position where it should be here looks like we had some gypsum pieces here and here they weren't like formed like these perfect flowers there's one room they call the snowball room and it's just full of these globes of gypsum flowers absolutely gorgeous pale pale white and these bone white gray white flowers of, of gypsum it's just very beautiful and here, I think because they were coming out through the limestone, they were a little more random. It's like they tried to be flowers, but ended up more like frost. It looked like frost over everything. And it wasn't on every surface. It was on the edges a lot. Right here. You know, some of these areas didn't didn't have any gypsum on them. Sometimes it was very subtle, just like a sheen of that bone white. There we go. Let's get some more of that white in there. Huh? Yeah. So this is beginning to look. I'm gonna Again, pull this in for you to see. Here I'm pulling you in to see where we're going with this. And that's where we're at at the moment. Pull that back out. I've had a lot of requests for that to move in and show in stages, so hopefully that'll work out well. It means I gotta do a little more editing at the long run because I'm always accidentally hitting the record off button. <sighs> so, that's all right. It's a little more work, but it's, 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 it's well worth it. You know, I like it when people want to see what's going on here. It means that people are interested. And I really appreciate everyone who supports this channel with their subscription. Thank you very much for subscribing. And for those who haven't subscribed, hey, I hope you enjoy. And if you do enjoy and you want to support the studio, simply subscribe. It's not going to cost you anything. I just want to be able to show people what I'm doing here in the studio. I think it's nice for people to see what happens in a studio. An artist is working in their studio. What, what does that mean? It's a lot of this. <laughs> it's a lot of this. It's a lot. It takes a lot of time to make a painting. And a lot of training. And that's something a lot of people don't realize. When people go to college for years for this. Or they, they train on their own for years. And that's very costly. And uh, that's why paintings cost what they do. You're, you're paying someone for their professional work. And they had to go through, they have, you know, bills and, you know, debts to pay. You know, it's like everybody else. You know. What's, what's funny, I just read a report that was saying that, um, you know, if all the people who do go to college for a career, artists seem to rank pretty low on how much they earn. In fact, they're amongst the lowest. And again, that, that's only for those who stay in the art world. 
New York World is infamous for this, unfortunately. You know, we don't we don't make an hourly wage. We don't uh, have a salary, or benefits or anything like that. That that doesn't <laughs> none of that. We're usually on our own. You know, every now and now and then a, a gallery gets involved, but usually that means they want something very specific from you. And unless you really like doing that one thing, don't get involved. Because they do want you to do this one thing over and over again. I'm just gonna get some just some indications of some areas back here in the dark. Looking a little stark back here. There we go. Give the idea that there's still some things going on back in here. Not too much. Just indications to get the mind going. Ah, this continues further. Wow. Yeah, it did. It went in quite a bit. And I'm going to do that here too. Just barely. And this is the nice thing with using this one color because now we can really establish some shapes without messing up the depth. It's very good at these ghostly, barely hidden shapes that you might find in this kind of situation. And again, we got some gypsum forming up in here and in here. Now limestone gives the rock that organic look. And the gypsum, like I said before, looks like frost. There we go. I'm just going to go a little bit here. There was more of it here. And again, I'm using those footnotes that I made in the paint to show me where these locations were. So when I go in to do my details, I will know what's going on and why. Yeah. All right, right there I can see a patch. So I'm gonna make this very bright, it looks like a large patch. Bring in that texture into the stone. There we go. It's beginning to really come together here. Sometimes the gypsum formed in the seams in rock. The rock didn't even have to be broken as long as there was just a little sliver of space the gypsum would leach out back in here a little. It's because I don't want this to end too abruptly. Or again, it won't make much sense to the eye. I'll go, what's going on here? Ah, here we go. A nice big patch right here. You saw me just go, you know, dump a big clump of, of paint here. And that's because that's what the footnote said. There's this whole big clump right there, sitting there. Sitting there waiting to be discovered. Here yeah, there wasn't as much, it was very smooth here. This also helps to unify the stone on the image. Whew, yeah. I've been looking forward to this particular segment of this. Now we're getting to the, the meat of the matter. The, the, one, of the, one of the reasons why I picked this location for my work 
because of this beautiful conglomeration of gypsum and limestone. Coming together. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going with this, this white here just to bring in the suggestion of shapes deep here. It's looking a little too stark. So I'm going to correct that now. Why correct it later when I can correct it now? Right? There we go. Some of these spots are just a little. A little stark looking. They weren't that stark. I really need to establish those shadows, however. And that was important. If you saw the last few, you were there to see it. There. Now that looks like a wall. Instead of a crumbled down batch of stones. And the same for here. It was beginning to look like they were separated. I'm going to have to do the same right up here. That's not quite yet. And I'm using some brush strokes here. Bring in some basic highlights. There we go. There. That's much better. Alright. Now we're beginning to really see texture of this painting. And look how much it's brightened and yet I have not used much paint. But it's still brightened quite a bit. Alright, there's this guy here. It was a look like a chunk of rock that attached to the ceiling here. came down in front of everything else. So I'm going to have to use my darks to reestablish the connection here at some point. Although to tell you the truth, it was hard to tell when I was there. It was very difficult to see it. There's some gypsum up in here. And that's going to connect these pieces. Everything's in layers, even how you connect things. It's all in layers. There we go. There. And one of the nice things about YouTube is that I'm also able to preserve some of this techniques that I use, the things that I've seen. And that would be my cat Neo. He's a lovely little tuxedo cat. Sometimes he visits me in the studio, but it's kind of rare. And sometimes when I have students here, he'll do that. And that's always a special treat when Neo comes walking in and making his little demands. I have to reestablish some, some grays in there. And that's what you do, you go back and forth between lights and darks. You keep your shapes as best you can. And these were very soft bits of gypsum here and there. You take your time. That's, that's one of the beauties. You can think about other things. You can listen to music. I like to listen to music when I paint. can't really do that when I'm on YouTube, though, because I don't own, other than, you know, I bought the, the CD or downloaded 
properly and paid for the tunes that I listen to. I believe in that very strongly. But since I don't own the copyright to them, Facebook doesn't want me using them. Uh, not Facebook, YouTube and Facebook. They don't want me using the music. Or I end up with some kind of copyright infringement. It's a shame though. I like the music that I listen to when I when I paint. It helps. It helps. Yeah. Music inspires art. Painting, painting inspires music. I've seen it happen. artificially separate them. Oh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. We got some more gypsum inclusions here and looks like a big piece of it right here. It's like these spikes of gypsum. Sometimes they curled and all kinds of crazy things. And you get just some of the stone out and a little more obvious. Stone that doesn't have all this gypsum all over it. I want to make sure it shows up. And there we go. And that gives the painting a sense of depth. There. Yeah, look back. You always look back. You want to see what it looks like from a distance as well as up close. see some areas where I've marked specially as being more heavily influenced by gypsum. I've got to bring that in and show it more strongly in those locations. kind of snowflakey kind of stuff. But it wasn't everywhere. No. no, that it wasn't. It was not everywhere. Here I think I got some nice rocks going off into the background, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. That area looks proper. So I'm going to bring up just a little more of these lights where they belong. Again, just to intimate shapes that continue on in the darkness. got this this section done there we go and these days I've had a lot to do it's been a very interesting journey doing my little videos here I 
I have to go pick up a friend later today, so... That's something I have to make sure that I do. Now here you're going to see more details as the rock comes closer, of course. So I want to make sure these look proper. that there's some gypsum here amongst the limestone. You know, not the whole cave looks like this, just a section. Every section of that cave looked different. It was like 80 different caves all in one. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. lovely textures. I may as well work with them, yes? So one would think. I also want to get these stones here. There we go. Bring that. I'm going to get this nicely lit here. Now you still have some of that dark stone in there. I just want to bring this in a little closer so it looks like it's connected because it was. It was not just some, some random boulder sitting there. It was part of this whole wall. And here the, the flat works very nicely. It's really capable of getting some good stone-like textures and brush strokes. Pull them in just a little bit. There. There we go. Nice and nice and carved. All right. This one here is crazy with gypsum. This was just a piece that just had gypsum all over it. Big spiky pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing my brush up to make these crystals show. And they weren't like quartz crystals. They're very soft. They're very very soft. They, they're very easily damaged. So please don't don't handle them. You'll just break them up and destroy them for everybody else. Some people get very tempted to just muck with it all. It's not really a good idea. <laughs> not unless you want to prevent people from seeing the gypsum flowers. Then, well, that's your goal and we are at odds. I want everyone to see them. just want to make that a little more subtle. This is why doing the gypsum was such a challenge because it didn't necessarily follow the flow of anything. It just appeared wherever it could, wherever it was present in the rock. So I can't really predict, so I had to get my notes in there. together maybe 
I don't know. Don't know how that works. All right, here we go. Got some more of these little bits and pieces here. I don't want the gypsum to be too bright because it was very gray. It's very gray stuff. did show up it was very spiky and sometimes it was like little bits I have one painting coming up that's going to be nothing but a gypsum wall gypsum and limestone that was in a, another part of the cave different colors a lot of salmony colors were there it's really interesting how how the different how different those colors were. All right, now I'm up to this last sweeping bit and I think that's where we're gonna stop for today once I get that in. So, first let's take a look at this edge right here. So I'm gonna come in with this edge. Just gonna bring in these little, little tappy details from the gypsum that was on the ceiling. And we cling there and just be all crazy and like little soft. Soft ice patches. It was very, very interesting. It's very brittle stuff. Dusty. Very dusty. I, I wondered how much of the the dirt on the ground was actually come from crumbled gypsum. I'm not sure if anyone knows that. I would assume the geologists at Mammoth Cave would know that. They didn't talk about it. Might be a good question to ask the next time on one of those tours. You know, they always ask, you know, any, any questions? And very few people actually like raise their hand and ask a question. I don't know why, but yeah. Let me get that in there. There we go. I want to brighten this line a bit. It cuts right across this one. Good. Yeah, that makes that much more apparent. There's gypsum here, but not really on this edge so much. Instead, what I really want to do, here we go, we got some gypsum right there. We'll bring that in. gypsum right in there you see my brush caught some of the textures there and that's a reminder as to where things were I made sure that all my gypsum footnotes had a lot of texture to them for that reason so even after they got covered because I knew I'd have to do it last I could still find them just by the texture and the very specific texture that I used here. And it brings it out very nicely. All right, here this is a smoother piece of stone. I'll bring that smoothness out here. go. 
So my detail brush will have a lot of fun next time. Be able to get details in. We'll start with our darks and we'll go to our lights because that's what we do. And we're gonna dance these little gypsum details right into place. And once the detail layer is done, and I predict that will take a couple of videos worth of time to do, then this piece will finally be finished. And I'll be able to sign it and add it to the other Mammoth Cave pieces that have been finished. Which is always nice, finally getting these done. It's been many years since I started these. see the lip of the ceiling as it comes in and how it had all these gypsum -y pieces here all collecting along the ceiling some fancy handwork to get those details in right. I think I've got it. And slowly but surely the painting comes into focus. challenge getting a, a sense of perspective with this. There we go. Mainly because these colors are all grays. Grays don't always help with that. flatten a bit so to get them looking three-dimensional can be a real challenge there we go so you got to use a lot of drawing skills as well as understanding your colors if you don't understand your colors no matter what you do it's not gonna come out right some spikes here as well as another edge you know, and each wall was very different each one had its own looks like we got a little spikiness here there we go we'll bring this in
could see that there were all these little patterns and crystals forming and flowing here. There. All right. Just a bit more to go. Just a little bit to go, and then we're all set with this layer. You can tell I am very excited. I do like painting these, but I also like finishing them. I like to move on. I think the next one I'm going to do is going to be in emotional colors, as I call it, rather than... Ah, we had some gypsum here, huh? Rather than natural colors. Maybe that's what I'll do next time. So I'm not uh, constantly painting in grays. That'd drive me crazy. Everything I did were in these colors. I, I'm not really good with that. You know, some people really love gray. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's all right, you know, as far as colors go, but I'm more of a vivid colors kind of person. You can tell from the shirts I wear, I like vivid colors. So, there we go, some nice gypsum pieces here. And you can see I'm doing them in kind of a starburst pattern. Because many times when they're able to form properly, that's the pattern that they form, is these starbursts of white. I'm going to start here with just the highlight. Get that established nicely. Okay. Gotta keep that going there. at all with these lovely bits. Sometimes you see things that, oh yeah, I forgot to put that in. That was one of those. turning my brush with each stroke and that way I get these these little crystal patterns going very nicely use the brush use the brush use your paint that's what they're for don't be afraid to use them for this see that the gypsum up here is different. It's softer. The gypsum down here blossoms spiky. So it was softer at the top and it was spikier at the bottom, which was very interesting. Now I'm just going to take this gypsum color that's on my brush and I'm just going to lightly, very lightly, I'm not even going to use any more paint. I'm just going to very lightly influence the floor color here. I'm not going to change any patterns. I'm just going back and forth. But that helps to unify the painting because now it looks like it's under a unified light, which is what you want. Yeah. This is rumpled flooring. done with this layer. Very exciting. And 
and there you have it. Let me just rinse off my brush real quick. And my turpentine here in a little bucket. And I'm still here. All right. Now what I want to do is bring that in for you so you can see what we've done. Hey, there's the flowers. Going up the wall. All these details. And this is what the painting is beginning to look like. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this edition of Galata Studios at YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the workings that we're doing here. And I hope to see you again next week where we start getting in those final details. It's very exciting. We're almost done with this painting. So any corrections and details will be done next time. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day and happy painting to you.